Hi, my name is Joao and I'm a support specialist for Cairn Research and today I'm going to be talking to you uh, about the OptiSplit 2. The goal of operation of the OptiSplit is that you uh, collect the emission wavelengths uh, of your fluorophores uh, and you separate them, physically separate them using a beam splitter. Now, as you can see there on the schematics, your short wavelength is being reflected by the beam splitter and redire redirected into an optical path. And independently from this, the uh, transmitted uh, longer wavelength is redirected into a different optical path and both are projected onto the same camera chip. Now, what this allows you to do is to simultaneously acquire uh, both emission wavelengths uh, on the same camera and increase your temporal resolution. So your OptiSplit comes with a calibration cube. That's what we're going to be using to, uh, to set up the system. Um, just open the cover, it's magnetic, it's just pulling it and uh, slotting your calibration cube into the, uh, into the grooves. Uh, make sure that it's uh, nice and, and tight. Put the cover back so you don't have excessive light in your in your system. And then the next step would be to uh, use the aperture uh, adjustments to adjust your vertical and your horizontal aperture in a way that your image is something small enough that you can manipulate uh, with uh, with the other adjusters on the uh, on the uh, on the OptiSplit. you have a good overlap of both your emissions is to use uh, and they're centered on your on your image on a smaller on a smaller area is to use these two controllers which control the aperture uh, the vertical and horizontal aperture you'd use them to first fill in your vertical section of your of your chip and then once you have something that is about a third of the size of your of your horizontal uh, uh, area filled by the image. You then use the split control, and you rotate it anti-clockwise. And that's important to rotate it anti-clockwise because if you do the other way around, you'll get uh, more uh, optical aberration. And if you rotate it anti-clockwise to separate both emissions uh, far apart enough to uh, to so that they don't overlap. You can use again the horizontal aperture control to fill as much of your chip as you can so you can use as much of your field of view as, uh, as possible for your, for your imaging. What you want to achieve is to, to have both uh, emissions uh, overlapping into the same area of the chip uh, and you do that, I'm just going to undo it, you do that by uh, using your vertical alignment uh, or V1 and your separation control and one thing to bear in mind is that you always should uh, use your separation control rotating it anti-clockwise if, uh, if you want to separate your emission wavelengths or clockwise if you want to bring them back together. So, what I have here, as I said, is a, is a very small uh, area of your field of view. We have one graticule in, uh, in the light path. It's focused on the, the, the microscope's relatively well focused on the graticule. And what you want to look out for is uh, absence of, uh, of aberration or optical aberration. So, you have your calibration cube in the OptiSplit. And the next thing you want to do is to uh, bring your images or your emissions together and make sure that there's no aberration as I said and make sure that they overlap. So the way you do that as I said is to use separation control and V1 or vertical control 1. What this vertical control does is it adjusts the vertical position of your reflected uh, wavelength 
the horizontal control, uh, sorry, the uh, separation control uh, controls the uh, horizontal uh, overlap of both emissions, of both emission uh, wavelengths.